So there are many different spring festivals around the world. And people normally cook foods and have special traditions and ceremonies to welcome back the sun and light returning. My family is Punjabi, so we have Basaki, which is a spring harvest festival. And of course, there's lots of food and dancing. And it's probably the most important festival besides the Wali in India. And my family, like I said, is, is Punjabi. And even the Punjab itself is an interesting word, how it got its name, because it's from some numbers. So if you can copy these for me, repeat these for me. Ek, do, ten, char, panj. And panj means five. And the other word is ab. So when you put panj and ab together, you get Punjab. And ab means like a body of water or, or rivers. So Punjab literally translates as five rivers. Now, when I was a kid, I used to think, uh, you know, the drink fruit punch. I used to think, what a weird name for a drink, like a fruit punch. And I could never understand why it was named that. I always thought it was an odd name. Until about a year ago, I saw a, a program, a cookery program. And they were talking about food from other parts of the world. And they were saying that uh, fruit punch originated in India. And it wasn't originally a fruit punch. It was a fruit punch because there were five different fruit juices in there. And of course, when that came over to England, the word was anglicized and punch became punch. So it became a fruit punch. So I find it fascinating how words, language, food, music, stories, how they travel around the world and how we're all connected in different ways. And also, I've been thinking a lot, like I said, about when something is gone, how much we miss it. We don't always appreciate things until they're not here. So here's a story, an old, old story. <clears throat> and all the animals were complaining. All the animals were complaining. All the big ones, especially like uh, like elephant. The elephant was saying, mm, God, me, God, me, God, me. Sweaty, sweaty, sweaty. I'm so hot. And the camel was going, God, me, God, me. God, me. It's too sunny. It's too hot. I'm sweating all the time. The monkeys, come, <laughs> come, 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 come. All of them complaining. The horse, God me, God me, God me, God me, God me. All the time, day and night, they were complaining, complaining. It's so hot. If only it could be a bit cooler. Well, hour after hour, day after day, week after week, who was hearing this incessant grumbling and complaining? Surya, the sun god. And Surya said, Acha. Very well, if, if that's what you want, that's what you'll get. Tomorrow I'm going to stay in bed. So in the morning when the sun should have rose instead, Surya just stayed in bed. Well, the animals thought, this is great. The elephants thought, oh, it's nice and cool. This is nice. No more garmi. The camels are going, no more garmi. The horses are going, no more garmi. Even the monkeys, the apes, but... <laughs> This is great. This is superb. Oh, it's nice and cool now in the shade. It's always dark. And things went like, um, like that, went on like that for a little while. And all the animals, the big ones especially, the loud ones, they were really happy. It was blissful. But after a while, especially the smaller animals, they started noticing things were changing. They started noticing that suddenly flowers weren't coming up, you know? Suddenly wheat wasn't growing in the fields or Grass wasn't growing. And you know who was suffering the most? The birds. Because at springtime, normally when their chicks would hatch, there were no chicks hatching because it was constantly dark, constantly cold. Things were getting worse and worse. All vegetation disappeared. All crops disappeared. Flowers were gone. Can you imagine such a world like that? Everything became almost like a desert. It was awful. So after a while, well, the animals got together, the big ones, and they said, right, tiger, lion, uh, elephant, giraffe, rhino, you need to go up to Surya and beg for Surya to come back. And they went and pleaded, and Surya said, no, you were complaining. You can now make do with what you've got. And Surya went back to bed. So the animals, they returned. And to be honest with you, life wasn't that hard for them. It was harder for those other animals, for the smaller animals, especially for the ones who were being hunted and preyed upon by animals they could see in the dark. Life was awful for them. And after a while, well, the birds got together. And the birds said, listen, this is really bad. We're having no more chicks hatching. We're going to have no more children. We're going to get old and die. And 
there'll be no more birds. Can you imagine a world without the birds? How awful would that be? We need a representative. We need a bird who is strong. We need a bird who is confident, who has a loud voice and who can present a good case. We need Cockrell. So Cockrell was sent to Surya and Cockrell went before him and presented himself. He said, please Surya, shine again. Return to the world. Give us your light. We need you. And Surya said, I've already told the animals. I've told them. They were complaining. <clears throat> They've got what they wanted now. Ja, ja, ja. And Cockrell said, Maraji, it wasn't us that was complaining. It was the big animals. It was the elephants. It, it, it was the giraffes. It, it was the camels. It was all those kind of animals. It, they always get listened to. It's always the animals with the loudest voice. Isn't it always the same? What about us, the voiceless ones? What about us, the quiet ones? What about us, please? We need your help. And Surya, well, he liked the way that Cockrell presented. He liked the case that he'd put forward. And he took pity, for, pity on him and the smaller animals, especially the birds. He says, very well. He says, I will return tomorrow. I will return, he says. But you tell those big animals, he says, to stop their buckering and their complaining. And I'll be there. And the Cockrell said, and I'll be there to greet you, I promise. So in the morning, if you can imagine, after such a long time, Surya appeared. And the light, it stretched its fingers across a land that was cold and dark and barren. And suddenly the sun rose up and light filled, filled the whole of earth. And as it did that, who was there to welcome it? But that cockerel with the loudest cock a doodle doo that you could imagine. And that's exactly what Cockrell does to this very day. He welcomes the sun with the loudest crow that you can imagine, telling the world the sun has returned. The sun has returned.